A quick video just to show you uh, this amplifier I bought. Um, it was sold as working, and uh, the seller said that he powered it up. And apart from the noisy speaker switch, it was um, it seemed to be working fine. And it's an SUV7. It arrived last week, and it's been sitting in the back of the car. I thought I'd have a look at it today. Um, and it's a pretty good nick. It's not bad. It's got a bit of a ding in the corner. I'm not too worried about that. I'll straighten that out. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I should do the power up. The seller said it worked. Uh, so I, uh, I went, just before I powered it up, I looked on the underside of it and I thought, hmm, this looks like something's been spilt inside it. I thought that's a bit ominous. So I thought, well, maybe I'll wait and I'll uh, take the bottom off and have a look. And when I took the bottom off, I've cleaned it up now, but this, all this board under here was covered in what looked like someone had spilt something in, inside it. And all around here, where the electrolytic reservoir caps are, you can see this is the blowhole for the uh, electrolytic capacitor. That was um, all gungy and filthy, and I thought, oh, well, it looks like one of the electrolytics has gone. Um, so I uh, took the electrolytics out, and this is what was greeted me. Clearly, one of these capacitors has failed catastrophically, and uh, obviously, not necessarily this, this the previous seller, but. Uh, Someone's obviously sort of thought got, it's gone bang and sort of blown out a load of smoke and acrid fumes and they turned it off and thought, well, I'll, I'll get rid of it on eBay. Um, yeah, so the um, this uh, Matsushita capacitor has blown its uh, vent plug right in the centre there, as you see. Um, now, most likely the reason being is, the, I mean, these caps are good quality and they very rarely fail. They do fail, don't get me wrong, they do fail. I mean, it's a pretty 30-year-old capacitor now, probably more than that, actually. Um, but Technics did like pushing these capacitors to their bloody limit. You know, you probably find that the supply to this is actually 50 volts, so there's no no headroom, there's no uh, safe working area to uh, for these caps. They're on their beam end all the time. Um, and if this was configured to 220 volts and you're running on a 240 volt line, that'd be just enough to push them over the limit and make them blow. So, uh, yeah, there won't be a video on this amplifier. It's uh, I'm just going to replace the capacitors, but I just wanted to show you that you know the risk of leaving these capacitors unchecked can uh, it's not worth it. You know, if you're recapping an amplifier. Be absolutely sure that the supply capacitors are safe before you uh, power them up because especially if you're going to sell the amplifier on you don't want this sort of thing to happen to the uh, seller when they're running it you know, or they leave the amplifier on and go out which but a lot of people do leave these amplifiers on all this explodes and blows out the capacitors it won't necessarily go short so it won't necessarily blow the fuse uh, so this could just come, carry on vomiting out ectoplasm all over the over the person's furniture and you're uh, not going to be very popular so it's always worth worth checking that uh, and I showed there's a previous video I did on the uh, Technics SU 3500 where I uh, applied voltage to it and you can see how much uh, current it, 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 it leaks you know it, it's leaking sort of half an amp at one point that, that the uh, previous Matsushita capacitor out of the Technics SU 3500 so yeah, get the capacitors changed and or well, checked and changed, and uh, be absolutely sure that uh, they're safe before you proceed.